All right, guys. Hello oh, and, and then welcome. Luke Duck did that to you. Wait, Fuck what? that guy, man. What? Uh, oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, what? Uh, oh, okay. Oh, can, you, can you edit that? Can I just get an edit? Fuck shit. No, we can't edit it. I don't know. I we don't have. We don't have the resources. We lost. We lost Cancel all of our sponsors show. It's after. Over. It's over. <laughs> yeah, we Cancel lost it. all of our sponsors after Thorin, you know, went crazy on Twitter for the last like two weeks. So <laughs> we got we got to just keep that one in there. You know, times are rough. We're sitting on. Oh no! Like, listen, if anyone wants to look at, this, if anyone tough. wants the most unusual VOD experience ever, just go back, watch the the Fly versus TSM finals live. But just like scroll up my Twitter feed as you do it. Like, listen, you're in for an experience. I did. Let's just say I didn't hold back. I mean, yeah. a not a lot of missiles left in the silo. Wow. <laughs> I, I think the, the thing about that that, that you know is, is pretty interesting that, that you tweeted was that you were having more fun watching my stream and just listening to like the conversation that we were having with with upset uh Fabibin, yes. Odo Omne, we Kedron. had Angel there, yeah. We had, we had everyone there. No. You're actually having more fun than I that mean, than watching the games. Some people might say that's a little biased, just based off that you guys are actually doing a show together and he's True. trying to boost your viewership. True. So I mean Oh, okay. I wouldn't take it. I, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't take it too much into, listen, into account, like what he's actually saying. But listen, I, I appreciate the banter. Is. Listen, I appreciate the banter. But let's be real. Even if I, even if me, even if local Docker gave me a fucking like kidney and saved my life, I still wouldn't say his stream was better than watching anything else. So don't worry <laughs> okay. about that. There's no bias here, mate. Really. Well, he's not getting uh, local Docker's favor. No, the thing is, though, Dom, I'm actually amazed it took them so long to do core streaming. Because no joke, way back in the day of esports when we used to be doing CS 1.6, like the 20, the 2000s, basically, mm -hmm. we always used to say, me and the four players I had who are friends, it's like. Who wants the most basic casual commentary? Like that is for casual fans who just want like simple things like being told what's on the screen. They want like like I always thought the ultimate sign that League of Legends fans are the biggest noobs of all time is that people actually used to think it was amazing that like quick shot said all the names of the actual skill shots. It's like, <laughs> bro, just tell me you did his did the fucking E. Like who gives a shit what the name is? Like, like what sort of Harry Potter law level dog shit is that? So I always used to think, why isn't there just a stream where it's like core streams? It's like just a bunch of people who are experts, but they're not they're not to commentate the game they're just they're just chilling and commentating on what they see well, like they, if they see something they coming actually out, had interesting. So, so, i find that way more interesting so they actually had this for a while there was a second stream back when they did um like the the best I of three they did a couple of them yeah so for lcs they did the best of threes right and there would be some be games my boy yeah there would be some games uh, where it was just like on the main on the main stream and sure. then there was there was not a second game playing at the same time so they would use that second stream to bring in people like i remember i did one where it was like me medios and kobe and we just like we're chilling talking about the game oh, and i thought cool. that that was actually like really good content and then i don't know what happened yeah, yeah. bro they never they never invited me back after it so you know i guess I seen fans long. Don't get confused there. That wasn't a euphemism because he was with Meteos chilling. Like, you know, because if it's listen, if I was putting together a smoking session, like, I will dominate Meteos, Kobe. <laughs> listen, as long as someone throws some dank dogs in I'll party with those guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Listen, They're that's a good time. Around. I'm just saying that's a good time. Yeah. Also, it's, it's it's just, uh, I think it's so fun to watch it because you get to get a feel for the personality instead of like, when you see people talk about a, a game on a broadcast, it gets, I mean, you can't showcase everything and you can't be like, you can be you can be honest, but there are just some things you can't really say. Uh, so I, I think it's just it's just real, and it's I think yes. that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Well, the secret right. is if you want people who can say the things that you can't normally say, you just bring Feb of an on me. That guy is actually mental. He's brilliant, but it's so mad in it. Some of the shit he comes up with. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's <laughs> I mean, the point. It's like who would have thought Feb was so funny without these types of streams? Like. Yeah. Uh, I mean. This guy's hilarious. I mean, have you ever have you ever watched it, uh, met him in real life? Uh, no, no, I haven't no, met him. Then you should know, but I mean, he's a massive troll. Um, so, I mean, he's a funny dude to be around. Especially when he comes straight from the garden, but... Uh... <laughs> straight from the Man, garden. My favorite is, you can tell how funny something is by how slowly he says, the... instead of just saying like, ha ha, he goes like, ha, ha, like, it just goes so slow, <laughs> like, that means he's actually just baked as fuck. Like, it is. <laughs> he's just been out and tending to the shrubbery. You know, just get, know, getting man, himself, I, taking his chlorophyll. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know, bro. I just think he just enjoys gardening quite a bit. You know, he's just a, a somebody who has a, a passion for you know maybe creating a nursery or something like that in the future. Actually, since you brought up Feathers, I wanted to get this story on the show. I know we talked Come about on. it in the coast review. I, Cold already knows it's coming. We talked about it when we were live viewing LEC. But um, Cold actually had an interesting experience. It's one of his first experiences as a pro player with Fabivan on a team. Okay. This is both when they were playing Challenger Series. So, I mean, this is where we can just open the floor. Oh, is this H2K? Yeah, let, oh, let yeah. us have oh, it. Oh, yeah. Okay, come let on. Let us then. have it, Trashy. Uh, I mean, oh my God, that's so many years ago. But um, 
I mean, so this was before uh, I went to NA. So this is like, what is it, in 2014, 13, something like that, uh, when uh, we were playing in HTK on the in the challenger scene, and um, we were at a point. I don't know if you guys recall all the all the details around it, but we were we were like a super hype team in in the challenger scene, um, and everyone expected us to just go straight into LCS. I think. Uh, and then we we had to play the. It was back when the relegation was still on, so we traveled to we traveled to America to play um, against at the time Copenhagen Wolves. Uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, that uh, Youngbug was still playing at the time uh, oh, on okay. Copenhagen Wolves. Um, Is this the one with Forgiven? Um, no. Okay. No. Freeze maybe. No, no, no. Reckless? It's it's or... no, no, no. It's 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 somewhere in between there. Like ah, it was. Okay. It was a team that people just expected to lose uh, against oh, us. It was, uh, so people just expected we would just 3-0 and go straight into into uh, to EU LCS at the time. Um, but we got 3-0 really fast and lost because we were just like we were just a bunch of cocky kids. Like we, we <laughs> had, right. it was it was me it was me Febi uh, we had Yanan uh, on 80 and we had Oruamne on top. And oh, there we go. Um, our support was AOD, uh, Romanian guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably the, the less the, he afterwards he, he got to play in ULCS, but another. So so after all that shenanigans, it was like you know obviously you lose, so there has to be a problem with a player. You know like, we have to change someone. And I I just um, it was funny because back then we were both like we were all so young, so uh, it was player decisions that uh, decided like you know I don't want to play with this guy, so you know come on who did you cut? If this guy, like this guy, has Come to just be thrown out, you know. So, uh, at the time, like I remember, me and Febby, we had some some heated arguments. Uh, and I, I, the thing is, like, there has been so many, so many weird stories about like who, what actually was said. And I think it was like something I, I, I told him, like he was like such a, like uh, egocentric kid or something. And he, after that, it was just over for me. So I, I got thrown out of the team and. Uh, All right. <laughs> and then I by got the way, a great one there, by the way, for been like, you're just so egotistical. I'm not egotistical. Get out of the team for saying that. You can never fucking play with me again. Like, oh, it's not, <laughs> not exactly, you know, it's not too high I mean, on that one. Is it? <laughs> Give me a break. I don't, I don't want people <laughs> to talk too much. You actually checkmated him there, dude. You checkmated him. Yeah, but I mean, it was at that time, it was like something had to change. So uh, I got I got kicked from the team and amazing got in. And then something happened to him. I don't hundred percent recall like what actually happened. Maybe to him. a TSM or something. Um, I was oh, it's after that maybe. Um, it was, it was just. Uh, actually, I, I don't. I don't hundred percent. I mean, he played know, in the, the team out. at Spring Split. Right? And then, and then, no, no. So th- what happened was instead of him, then they decided to take Lulex. And then that was when there was like this uh, initial. Tu- there was like another tournament. Oh, where you could get this is where the, they went into LCS afterwards when. Oh, the yeah, yeah, expansion that tournament. Yes, okay. Exactly. Something I remember Lulex because listen, I had some fun. You know, yeah, yeah. So, in the LCS. Uh, so it was it was just like a funny story that I mean after I think a couple of years after uh, me and Febby talked it through and just laughed it off because it was just like such a it was sure. just, just a childish moment from both of us in many ways. But um, it's like one of those fun stories that you can. You can talk about uh, some sure. ye- some years later uh, after after it happened, but uh, that was like one of my first encounters with Fabio. And uh, I did mean, you hate I, him I, for like I, a while? Uh, like a couple of years, you know. I don't. I think hate is a big word. I was just like a little bit. I was like a little bit frustrated and angry at how it, how it turned out because, uh, I mean, we were just we were basically just like kids. We didn't we didn't actually know what we were doing. We were just mm-hmm. we were just playing the game and hope we would win. And if we didn't win, then obviously some player was bad. Of course. And then he had to be changed. Uh, it was that simple. Um, but I, I just think it was it's a funny story to kind of show the level of uh, professionalism that was around at that time. Because it was it was literally just like you have five players and these five, five players has to win. And if they don't win, then uh, no, there is no bigger authority than the players themselves. So if three sure. people... Uh, if three people decide, you know, this guy is shit, then he will just get thrown out, and then they will find a new guy, and that was just how it was. I um, thought it was fun, though. I, I love playing so, with yeah, TSM, to be fair. I mean, you know, they just have five players, and if they don't win, you just kick the jungle as well, so yeah, problem solved. <laughs> I mean, hey, it worked out for them. They ended up getting yeah, exactly. a championship. Listen, so. they jacked your swagger, mate. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but um, I mean, I always, I, I don't know, how did you feel about like having the five player system? Like, because I mean, some of my best memories were before like it became so professional and like so involved because when, when there's, it feels like you, you, you limit your like freedom and like your influence in the game when like everything becomes super, super professional. I remember in season five, it's like, you know, players couldn't decide on what, what we were doing. Like when we were practicing, there was like a time where like the internet would get shut off. There was a time where we'd have to go to an office. Like, oh, like a have curfew. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like curfew and everything. Go stand up too late or something. Yeah, yeah. Because we had players that would stay up too late. But I just remember like the whole situation was just like, I don't know. It felt like yeah. just more like weird pressure instead. Like you're getting pressured internally more than just pressured from the outside because you had obviously mm -hmm. competition and like the stress that comes with that and everything. So how did yeah. you feel about like that type of environment? Because you played all the way from the fucking Stone Age when I yeah. used to play up until, you know, season nine. So. I mean, I, I guess I, I, I didn't play in like the first two, three seasons, uh, but after that, it, it, I was I was part of it. But I, I mean, it's a little bit mixed feelings about it because it's a very double edged sword, you know, like if if it just works out with the players and everything is cool and you're bonding well, then it's a it's a nice experience. But um, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of it. And I think that's also why it, it's shifting away from it more and more. Um, uh, I I think that the less, basically the less decisions about um, rosters that the players has to take, or uh, just like generally speaking, the more they can focus on their individual play, the better overall. Um, so uh, I, even though it was fun and it created a lot of, it, it created a lot of good stories. Not gonna lie, um, I I think. Now it's just got to a point where you have to look outwards towards more professionalism from from how how are the big sports teams doing it around uh, around the globe uh, and uh, you will never see that. So um, if you want to elevate esports and league in general, then you just it's just not an option in my opinion. Uh, so I, I'm happy that it's it's not there anymore because uh, as a player, it's it also it's also as I said, it's like double edged sword where it also gets very stressful if if you feel like you are the one that plays worse uh, on the team or if you feel like you're more of the, the guy that kind of tries to bind or bonds the team or, and, and figure out like a way for the team to function, then sometimes you your individual play gets a little bit worse. And then if it doesn't work out, then suddenly you're just out of it. So uh, sure. you need you need people with like an objective uh, um, mindset of like... Um, that can see how the bricks are working. So you're just not like throwing out a, a piece for for more of a feel like with more of like the feelings perspective rather than just looking at it from 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 an objective way. So yeah. uh, that's how I see it. Now, I, I definitely agree with the professionalism. It just for me, I, I just always felt like I, I, I thrived in the, the king of the flies, you know, survival of the fittest style of um, you know, games. Cause you know, it just felt like you were just going out there every every day, just having to put out your best because if you fuck up you're gone you know just having that pressure from the team i don't know for me it actually made me feel a lot different than like when everyone had to deal with contracts and buyouts and all this stuff like it just became like so professional that it lost some of like the i don't know like the um the novelty of being of being a a, a pro player i mean there's so many stories that i had from that time where, like in season two for example like we didn't even have like managers really like we would have a manager like od was our manager right but he's also the owner of Dignitas and when we would go to all these tournaments we went to Korea for two months we had no manager with us we had no person with us just five five kids from the U.S. go to a foreign country Korea we're living in some random place we don't speak the language like we had to navigate everything ourselves like I just feel like that was such a uh you know like fun situation to be in it's like you gotta just do everything yourself and I think for me personally, just when everything became so so professional, it felt really hard to have fun without really liking your teammates and like knowing them. And you know, you, it's you even a see, job, isn't it? yeah, I mean, but you see some teams that actually are able to, you know, have an environment where the players are having fun and you know they enjoy their sure. own company. And it's one of the reasons why I feel like G two, for example, always beats Fnatic is G two just has that like you know brotherly bond feel. Here's to the, the team. thing, though. Tom, I'm with you. They do. But the problem with that is it's like, that's just like the fucking cherry on top, isn't it? Like they also have like the best players, almost every single fucking position. So it's like, I, I put know? it this way. Say you took the exact same personality like that Mickey X or Wonder have, but then instead Wonder's skills are like fucking Finn from Rogue and then Mickey X's skills is like 
tour from XL, mm -hmm. would they would it, would they have the same like friendly aspect? I think they'd get, be getting mad when they lost or someone had a bad game. Because the thing about the G two players is they're all so good. I think that's why they have that like invulnerable mindset of like even if we're slumping, it doesn't matter. Because when you've got that many good players, you just figure it's going to come together eventually. Like oh, that guy will get his game back together. Like if Perks is playing back, well, get he'll get it together by the player. Like it's a lot easier to trust people in that setting. I think I do agree they're definitely friendly oh, compared to most teams. Also, they did. They just have five great players. Like it's not even like good strong players. It's like five great players. So, uh, in in a situation where we have five five great players, it's more about facilitating them in a position where they they feel like that the system or the the environment they're working in fits them, and the personalities of G two just fits perfectly with this kind of mindset and this kind of environment uh, that they have. So, I think. You pluck that. You pluck that theory or the, that uh, ideals of like how you you do you work within a team into ninety percent of of teams, and then you will just see them losing, and then people will backlash them like crazy for for not taking things seriously. So uh, I, I think it's just like I, I don't like. I generally don't like that argument for G two because um, yeah. it, it just it seems to me it's just very much their personalities and how they they those five. It, players are as as people that drives that uh, kind of um, environment. So let me give uh, you an example. Let's say everything else in G two was the same. They're all the same personalities. They tweet and meme the same way. They do everything the same, right? But in the game, in the playoffs, let's say Wonder had had a really bad playoff performance in like one of the low bracket series, and they'd gone out to I don't know, let's say Rogue or something, right? If that happens. All of a sudden, that hilarious thing where they always win the finals, and he's like, "Okay, see you guys, I'm off for a wow raid," and he's not even joking. Like that suddenly isn't that funny anymore. Like that, I bet he would get like, like they might start like, "Haha, that's cool, dude," but you know, get it together next. Like that would go sour really quick, in my opinion, if a player like that wasn't like as good as he is, basically. Like sure. he's sort of getting away with that in the same way as like you hear stories about some sports stars who were sort of rock and roll, you know, but they can still play awesome in the game. It's like you put an insane pressure on yourself, like. The, your teammates will accept it, but I think if you ever go bad, they're gonna. That's gonna be what they focus on. That'll be the number one thing everyone's thinking. Yeah, I, I feel like they would actually like, I mean, be smart enough still, to manage it, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it still boggles my mind like crazy how how Wonder can still like perform at a high level. Like I, I just uh, from 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 just uh, from my own perspective on on how to play well in the game, I, I I feel like I at least have I have to put so many hours into the game to stay relevant. Um, whereas you know he he just like goes through the day and play some scrims and enjoy that and then go off play some world of warcraft and then you know uh i, I would love to be in his position but i think it's just like it's like one of those one percent uh one percent of of the player base that can maybe do that uh, maybe even less so uh I, <laughs> I mean also just from from watch like i've been a teammate of his for two years uh i can see why he can do such thing because uh, whenever, whenever new champions would come out or champions that he didn't play, he would just play them maybe three, four times, and then he would say, "No, you know, I'm ready to play this champion." And I would watch him play, and it's, it looked like he'd be, he spent 50 games on a champion. Um, and then some, sometimes the meta would shift, shift, and then a champion would come up that he maybe played one year ago, and then he would just say, "You know, like I can play this champion," and then he would play it and execute it like he spent maybe 10. 15 games practicing it so i think he just has that has like a, sp a special talent for for uh, for the game that not a lot of people can have like most people in in the in the game that are pros are, are pure like grinders and that's how they they get good at the game or stay on top of that game uh but i think he's just like such a unique unique case uh and he he always he's he's the kind of guy that likes doing things his way. So if he feels like he will be playing well in playoffs if he just chills for a season, um, then I don't really think you should start arguing with him. You should rather just let him do his thing and then see if it actually works. And then obviously it has shown that it works because in the playoffs I think he was he was maybe even one of the if you not, so if, if he wasn't like one of one of the best he was probably the best performer on G two throughout the whole mm -hmm. uh, playoffs. So. I, I mean, guess... just props to him. I wish, I wish I could do it like that. That would make my life. That would have made my life like much oh. easier. Um, but that's just not the case. So um, it, it's always cool to see things, see people that can do things different than others. So uh, I don't understand how he can do it. But I mean, he he is a sick player. Okay. Well, I guess I will. Um, I'll just 
kind of push back. I mean, one one question that I have for you there is, do you think that he could be, like, way better if he did solo queue more? Like, do you think that he's just getting away with it because of, like, the competition in the region? Or do you think that, like, you know, a player that has this much natural talent, if you put him and you, you require him to solo queue more, you require him to practice more, would he just be, like, the best player in the world or something crazy like that? Um, I, honestly, that's a really fucking good question. Um, I have no clue how to answer that because... Uh, I have always felt that if you try to, if he's like one of those guys that if you try to push him out of what he believes, then it will only make him play worse. So um, I think you just let him do his thing. And I I think he, he it's not like, let, let's not put it like he doesn't play solo queue at all, because uh, at times when he feels like he needs to, uh, then he will do it. Or if he has uh, a desire that he feels like, you know, I really want to just play the game right now, then he will play the game. Um, but uh, I, I I don't know. And I, I it's it's something that uh, actually has boggled my mind like crazy over the years uh, of like how much, and a, a very interesting topic is like how much is actually needed to practice um, to stay on top because it's so um, specific to the person, like how much time you actually need. Uh, I've always felt that you need a lot of hours at least i need a lot of hours i i've spoken to many other players that feel the same way um because on a pure mechanical level you i, I would feel if i didn't play a champion uh, a couple of days before i would have to play it in a professional game then i would not feel as confident uh on on the pick um so that requires you to keep keep uh, repeating these champions and keep repeating uh um or like just keep in touch with what what is what is in the meta. Um, uh, so I, I I honestly don't know, and I I I would love to I would love there to be more experimentation with less playing, and more of just um, and see like how that affects certain players. Uh, but right now it, it, there's just a norm of just pushing to play uh, as much as possible. Um, so most people just go that route, um, but. As I said before, Wanda's just he he likes to be the boss of what he's he's uh, supposed to do. So uh, if he doesn't think that it, he re he's required to play more of and it doesn't impact his gameplay, then he will just do it like that. So so yeah, just one thing. So you 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 thought it'd be a good question, and obviously something that you're you're looking forward to is being a coach. You've announced on Twitter that you're going to look for coaching in the future. If you were in a team, like, are you going to like go in with the mentality of like? Hey, we're just gonna do what everyone else does, which is like now it's 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 less gameplay than it used to be. Like I know some teams used to like triple block; they would do uh, two sets of three of um, three hours and then one set of two hours. So they would do eight hours a day of practice. Now it's only one set of five games, which is normally around five hours with reviews. Sometimes it can be six. Mm -hmm. What is your mentality towards like to, for towards team practice? And then also like, would you just be going into a situation with the team and trying to just specifically see how much? each player needs because I feel like the one thing that could go wrong in that situation is if you're requiring certain players to play more than other players, you know, they might just like look at the players that don't have to play as much and, you know, kind of be like envious or kind of creates like a divide or like maybe like a mini hierarchy within the team where it's like, Oh, these are like the better players. These are the worst players or something like that. Like how do you kind of view like this whole situation? Um, a good question. Uh, I, I think first of all, you need to uh, kind of get a feel for what kind of players you're working with. Um, Younger players, generally speaking, they have the, they they usually are way more motivated to put in a lot of hours in the game, and uh, if you have that desire to like, I remember when when I was like 18, 19, you know, like you would you would wake up and you just you just want to play 20 games, uh, 25 games, and that is that what that is what is joyful to you. Uh, the older you get, uh, some sometimes it gets more into like yeah, it's like zero, like. You, uh, I mean, maybe for you, zero, but uh, I think it goes more over to to actually thinking more broadly about the game and, and thinking about like fundamentals and uh, looking at analyzing other uh, teams and other players. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I think that this, the way uh, practice has, has like stagnated in innovation in terms of that you just, every team is doing this, so we are doing that as well. I don't really believe in. Um, I think there should be way more uh, willingness from teams to try to get out of that norm. Uh, and uh, does that mean you're playing less or more? I, I, I think it just 
it's it's not about like the hour spent is more about the quality of the hour spent um and i think that you should look more into trying to uh find certain aspects of the season where you put in more time and certain aspects of the season where you put in less time because if you look at it from from um more of like this uh from from sports science where there's there's literally no not much science in esports about like what actually gets a good performance uh and it's it's very individual from team to team so uh if you look at sports then sometimes some teams try to ramp up a season uh sometimes doing a season take take a week or two where you, you practice less and then uh trying to uh find ways in 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 league where you can do the same or maybe find at least try out new things so you can get a better feel for what works and what doesn't work uh are you doing that in origin it, since obviously origin like prides himself with the astralis side of like sports psychology and stuff so we, was there any of that when you were in og uh no uh no oh, okay they just left the league team to themselves uh no 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 uh i think the, the league team got as much attention as as the astralis team got uh on on that part it was just specifically to practice it was not a thing and i i actually uh I mean that's a completely different story uh, if you want to go into that um but uh, let me just finish the the first question first i uh, that i i i really think if you want to elevate the longevity of 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 players then you need to find a better balance of like how much practice time you actually put in because it is if you if you're if you just practice like these high amount of hours throughout uh years and years then it might hurt you on in the long run. So uh, definitely something that I would like to look into more. Yep. Thor, did you have something um, before I, I asked my question? Uh, I was just going to say, like, one thing that I actually found really weird in League, th when I first came to League of Legends, I could not believe that pro players' only a decision to practice aside from scrims was to just play solo queue with random people that aren't even pro players. Like, I, I remember thinking that's so crazy to me because, like, first of all, in the Counter-Strike world I came from, obviously, the only time you practice, even if you're not playing scrims, you play a pickup with other pro players. Like, you, you're always in a second with other pros. It's, it's never with randoms. You're always getting, like, half-decent practice at least. But also because because the, a lot of the things in League were actually very alien to any other esports game. Because even esports games that were made by people like Blizzard, they didn't actually care about the esports sets and they never controlled it like Riot does. So because Riot controlled it so that like there's only set servers, there's like one, two in each region. You can't have like a custom server that your friends can join. Like you can't do any of this shit. It means actually it cut down on a lot of innovation in how you would practice. Like I don't know if people know this, but for example, when Korea became this massive esports country was because of StarCraft Brood War, right? A really old school game. And what they did is like years and years ago, I'm talking, they like did all sorts of next level training techniques that are kind of like what you do if like you had an NFL team or something. So for example, if you played Zerg in StarCraft, they had like a custom map that was just those flying units, the Mutalisks, where you just practice the micro of how you fight, how you dodge them from them. If you're trying to dodge with like away from the little anti-air units, I forget what they're called, Scourge or whatever. And if you're the one trying to shoot with the other guy you can practice that micro and the idea is you just keep you can reset all the factors in the setting and you're not playing a whole game and then having to get to that unit and put it up and then hope the guy fights you and then practice it because that'd be so inefficient you're just practicing this one small area of the game over and over and over in the same way as in sports you don't if you're a football team just play a whole game for 90 minutes and go right it's got another one of those in an hour like you practice one skill like free kicks or how to pass so that people are only headering it in the goal like you have you basically you 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 focus on mastery of one element, especially obviously an element that your team's not good in. So I was always amazed. I, I mean, I know Riot sort of locked people off that till they had the practice tool, but I think that's one of the things that to this day I find really underwhelming about League is that people are expected, if they want to do more practice, to just grind solo queue hours. But I, I don't feel like they can be getting much out of that now, especially yeah. not in the modern day when it's so different from a pro game. Like, like Cold says, I would find other ways to practice. Like, an obvious one to me is I would just spend a bit more time on the theory side of the game. Like if this was still where we had all the pro views, if I was a pro player, I'd be spending at least an hour a day just watching some of the best players with their pro view. Like if I'm a laner, what trading patterns do they use? If I'm a jungler, it's harder because you can't really know if someone called for that gank or if you just, you know, but you can try and guess. You can look at the map state and try and figure things out. That's what I would be doing, trying to level my, yeah. my mental side I mean, up, you know. And, so, can I can I go in? Yeah, because, yeah sure. Because uh, I think it. it's actually it's it's something that makes when you say it like that, it makes so much sense. 
but um, if you get get into the minds of like some of these uh, younger players, they don't see they don't see it the way you would see it. They rather would just play because that's what that's what's fun. But yeah, sure. um, well, it's hard work uh, to do that, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that is what drives most most players. That is the, the fun of playing. Yeah. So um, why would I spend two hours looking at a replay? True. Or because that would that would mean that I have to do something that might not be as enjoyable. But uh, if you actually see the bigger picture, then it's it's much easier to try to uh, understand why it actually can help you. Uh, because a leak is so much about decision making all the time, all the time. And then uh, you do a decision and the enemy will do a decision. And maybe your decision was not better than the other team. So now you have to start problem solving. And if the more information that you have from, from uh, actually getting or like watching other people play, then maybe your problem solving will start being better and better. Uh, so I, I would always push for that, but trust me, um, that is not something you will be able to get every player to do because that is just not a that is just not the mindset that uh, yeah. most uh, your at least like from my perspective young players have. So I, I, okay, uh, so my take on this is actually I think that in the West a lot of players are legitimately addicted to solo queue. Like, they're addicted to having high rank. They always want to, like, go for that number one spot. More than actually, like, being good at League, they actually want to get that number one spot. They want to have the OP.GG with, like, the nice win rates for the tweet. They want to, like, have all that stuff. And they care more about, like, that than actually, like, mastering the craft of being the best League of Legends player possible. So, in my mind, like, that's where I see a lot of that coming from. Because was, and, and the other part of it would be kind of, like, Riot not allowing in-houses at the beginning of um, of the, the time as a pro player. I remember in Season 4, we tried to do in-houses, and they actually made us not play on the tournament server. Like, we were, like, there was a time where, you know, um, we just did it naturally. You know, we finished our, our scrim block, and all the players wanted to keep on playing, and we just swapped up the teams. You know, like, I was, it was us versus TSM. I was playing jungle for TSM, Amazing was playing uh, jungle for Curse, and then, like, I think the support swapped as well, and we just, you know, we just wanted to run it back, which is, like, different teams and just like play a game and they actually we, we played 10 minutes of the game and then riot stopped us they were like get off the server right now you're forced to play solo queue because at the time their reasoning was part of the novelty of solo queue and one thing that they wanted to push as a company was the idea of being able to work through the solo queue ladder and having that being a legitimate path to pro so if you were a random you could play the solo queue ladder and if you got high enough you could play with other pro players and then if you were good enough with other pro players you would be able to like join a team potentially go pro or join a challenger team they started scouting grounds all these different programs to try to make solo queue more legitimate i mean the whole reason that they even titled it challenger is uh, was because these are the players that were supposed to challenge the pro players like at that spot so I think that those things combined kind of just made it like a, just a different world. Like they didn't even allow for the first four seasons. If they're not going to allow you to even play custom games or they're not going to allow you to even like do in houses, then when they randomly allowed in season five, it feels like everyone is so, or it wasn't even season five. I think it was season six or season seven when they finally allowed it, but everyone's already so stuck in the mindset of like, Oh no, this is what we do. We just play solo queue. Like fuck in houses. No one wants to wait for them because dude, I, when I was playing in 2005, when I played Dota, I played competitive Dota when I was 15 years old. And there was a whole IRC channel with bots and... and houses was the main way yeah, to play. Like I yeah, say, it wasn't It was, it was like, only yeah, in-houses. It was all the yes. best players just played together all the time through bots. There was Captain Draft. Like, it was all done with the technology in 2015. There's no reason... That's how that right guy, now. Samail from Evil Geniuses in Dota, who's like a... Who's like a I can't remember if he won TI or not, but he's like, oh yeah, I think he won TI. He, he, he came from just in-houses, even in the pro era. They just saw him in some in-house and they're like, this guy's insane, get him now. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that that's just like a way that it, it could uh, could definitely, you know, progress the, the game itself because, yeah, no one really tries to innovate the quality of practice at all. So I think that's definitely an interesting topic. Um, I mean, since we were talking about like, you know, G2, uh, a couple of the players that are on G2, Wonder and, and Mickey, uh, you got to play with um, in, in Splice. Uh, I just wanted to know like what, what your experience was with these players when they were super young like did you know that these guys were going to be gods were you when you were playing on that team you're like oh this team is going to just go super far or how did you how did you feel about you know playing with the the younger version of wonder and mickey uh hmm how did i feel i mean uh so we for people that don't know like the first year there was in in 16 uh we were at first 
the first uh, spring split, we went into relegations and um, had mm -hmm. to play one game to, to get relegated. And then we changed support. Uh, and then Mickey came in. And then that year we qualified for, for Worlds. So that was like a big, uh, a big change of pace. Um, when Mickey came into the team, he was like such a like a raw, both a raw player, but also like a very raw personality in the way that he was he kept most things to himself. He was like uh, very introverted. Like he would um, he he would just kind of do his thing, not talk too much. So it was a lot of of, but he was uh, very very good mechanically. Uh, so it was like a lot of us to try to lead him, and um, it, it it was tough. Not gonna lie, but I mean, back then, like you were just you were just it was less about actually uh, game knowledge. It was more about like raw play, in my opinion. Uh, so we were just we were just play, and then we had uh, I mean, uh, it, it was we we just like out of nowhere just got to to worlds, in my opinion, and we were just. We were just thrown into into the world championships and got into the the group of. Oh, yeah, I forgot you had Yamato Cannon as your coach. Yeah, we had uh, we had Yamato as. as... <laughs> no, you just said it there, like, dude. It's like we were just playing around, messing around. Next thing you know, we no, were actually, in worlds. It's like, what was he doing the whole time? He's watching, going, shit. No, actually, like Yamato, I've been so easy and fucked this up. Yamato was very good at um as at teaching us like very like the fundamentals of the game, on okay. a uh, so. So everyone was like kind of on the same page, and I think uh, in that season we were playing a lot of uh, one through one comps with like split push mid and split push top, and then uh, and that was teams, kinda, mate. they always do that. <laughs> that was that was kind of how we how we played, and then that just worked in in that time. I I, I don't think we were like that great honestly uh, as a team, but we just it just kind of worked out because the the other teams were worse. Um, uh, and then obviously we got to the wor world championship and uh it was kind of like a learning experience we got into groups with you know the hardest yeah, group yeah. come on possible yeah, like for we had T that tsm tsm rng, RNG samsung yeah samsung. Uh, and uh, i believe that was the year where samsung won the the whole tournament no that was when no, they came second. No, that was uh when they came second to yeah. sk2 oh yeah, yeah yeah true 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 uh but yeah it was, it was still a super strong group yeah of course yeah, yeah. Um, and we, we got like one and five and then our mindset going into the next year was like, you know, this was just like the start, you know, like next year is going to be even better. And then uh, what ha ended up happening was that we, we had like uh, a struggling spring where we got we got to quarters and, and got knocked out. And then um, we we uh, had to change coach and we th that was like a lot of stuff uh, around the team that didn't work out. And then um, usually usually at that time like at the time where there's a lot of um a lot of stuff happening around the team uh then it doesn't really work out on the on the field as well because we got or on the on the rift as well because there was just like so much confusion and we started it ended up actually being us five just doing everything i remember in the end of at the end of the the of the 2017 season i was scheduling skim scrims with with other people and like it was just like a big it was just a big fiesta <laughs> uh um and um that kind of hurt us a little bit because we were we were a strong group and we were good friends off the off the game um because we were four danes and and mickey was just mickey was mickey's just mickey like you can pluck him into any any squad and he will he will find a way to um, be try to be a little bit funny and be be like the kind of persona that that you guys see him being nowadays. So um, it, it was easy for him to plug into it. But for me personally, I had a lot of frustration at the time playing with both Wonder and Mickey because Wonder is like very he's very set on his things as I described before. So um, arguing with him is just not a possibility. If you argued with him, you were just you just lose, and uh, at the time I was like too good, too good of a guy to just uh, take it, take the discussion by its balls. So usually uh, it it would just be done his way. And Mickey was as was a very silent guy and didn't speak up too much and didn't really share his 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 emotions or feelings uh, in in and out of the game. So um, I can I could definitely see that they would go further because they were both very talented at the game. But uh, from from like a team aspect, I I didn't really see them uh, as like 
some as as some someone that would go that far because I felt like they were lacking some aspects uh, of the team perspective that uh, I thought uh, I had more of, uh, whereas they had more skill. But obviously, as we, uh, we have seen the, the game grow into a game where individual skill is just crucial to be good at the game. Um, so it has been fun watching them go into grow and go into G2 and, and perform well. Uh, um, but at that time, it was there was a lot of shit going on. Uh, and some some stuff seems like nothing nowadays, but at the time it was a lot of frustration, especially in the last year, uh, in in that team. Yep. If anyone wants to know why Mickey X unusual guy, just do this because I I follow an account right that just shows like different like scenic countryside views from around Europe, like beautiful areas you wouldn't know. And one I saw, I was like, what? And so just go to Google, right? All you're gonna type in is Slovenia village, and just look at Google images. This motherfucker comes out of like the Wizard of Oz or something like. You just go and look what these villages are like. Like it's not it's not a town or anything. It's mental. So just imagine <laughs> him just skipping along. Do, 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 do. No wonder he's just the fucking little. He's like some shit, like a yard or something. He's fucking. It's a weird. He's a weird guy. That's all I'm gonna say. I, mean, I, I, have, a, I have a good hilarious. story. I, yeah, I mean he he is. If when you get to know him, he's he's a super funny guy. But I have like this story that I. I always bring up because it just frustrated me. Like it, it really, really frustrated me like crazy, uh, because um, if it doesn't come through from from people that don't know me, I I like to try to optimize as many things around me that can help me perform. Um, and uh, at that time, I was very much into uh, exercising and uh, trying to eat properly. Um, and then next to me, uh, I have uh, I have Mickey X every day ordering from fries the same. or something <laughs> and i i mean ba we're living in the same house so i mean we're just all the time together so uh um he would he would order the same the same pizza and the same pasta every day and that was just be it you know and i all could right. just i i could just see how it affected him on his like energy levels throughout the days i bet you wrecked uh, the whole pizza <laughs> i mean and then I, I i was like i was trying to point him towards taking better choices uh, but when you're a teammate to someone you want to try to change their habits, it's very difficult because you ha there's like a fine line of trying to help someone or if they feel like you're attacking them. And yeah. that is that for me was like super uh, difficult to deal with also because uh, I'm a little bit older than him. So um, I at the time i know for sure i've talked with him about it as well uh afterwards but I, for me it was like really frustrated because uh um when you when you try to push for for something that you know yourself is is good for you uh and the the people that you try to push push it to doesn't take it in as you would hope then uh and you're 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 basically in the same house all the time uh, there will just be frustrations and that's that that is some frustrations i had with at least with him at the time but he, i mean he was that was just what what he loved you know so um yeah. i can't believe that he he made it through like a whole year with with that with that uh with that diet but uh we I actually mean, gotta ask him now what, what his diet is like you know say if yeah, he's I would, still doing I would love to know. Actually, i don't know i don't know uh I, if i would if if I recall correctly, they have a chef at G2 that probably makes uh, a little bit better food than that. So uh, uh, hopefully it's it's gotten better by by the years. Holy shit! I I I, I hope that it's been getting better. That sounds so rough. Like just only Italian food, man. Like so much carbs, like little protein. Yeah, then, I mean uh, this was like this was like in the in the break of of scrim. So before scrim, he wouldn't eat breakfast, and and then I was I was trying to push for a little bit because I could just feel his energy levels were so low. Uh, and uh, then his solution was he would get a little bit of choco pops, if you know if you know that. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and and that would be his breakfast, you know. So that that would that would just be the 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 icing on the cake, you know, to to make everything perfect for for the per the perfect gamer diet. <laughs> Holy shit! So so that's what you need to do to be the best supporter in Europe. You heard it from yeah. cold here. You go. It's confirmed. Sugar pops in the morning into pizza into one pasta dish. Boom. And then yep. you'll be the best best support in the world. Okay. Also, nice. you think of that diet, right? And then you think of his playing style where he's just going balls. He's just like a little kid who's had too much sunny day, and he? he's just like on a fucking <laughs> sugar rush. Like it's like calm down, son, calm down. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, he carried so many games. that kid in the advert? Bro. Like, I want that one. Chappelle reference. But at the time, there was just like no... There were not people around that could encourage uh, a guy like him to take better choices. So... Uh, how is he not fat? What, what that happened? sounds like literally like I would be 300 pounds if I had that diet. Like it just yeah, it but that's the sense. thing. If you've ever seen Mickey <laughs> X, it sounds like what he's talking about is literally all of it. Like I'm guessing he just had like the cocoa, cocoa pops, then like no lunch, and then just a pizza, and that was it. All right, this is gonna so, be a little uh, bit scuffed. Of all the snacks, I think you're probably okay. <laughs> this is you know, that's one thing that is mad. Over a lot of Americans don't get this, right? You know, they all think like, oh, but pasta's just like traditional Italian food. It's, like, it's not the way that you guys eat it. Like your portions, like three times bigger. Half of your portions, like the meat with the fucking sauce. The sauce, if you get it from the takeaway place, is gonna have low of sugar put in to make it taste nice like if you go to italy mate they eat the pasta with barely anything on it like some olive oil like a small portion they're not eating a massive garlic bread with it like they, they, like they they make it work for them and this is the thing people don't get the whole point is they eat that diet because they used to be farmers you go and work like eight hours a day as a farmer 12 hours mate you need loads of fucking carbs like in england all the food that's for farmers is like super it's like mashed potatoes stuff because you're just working 12 14 hours a day so you're gonna burn all that off anyway it's like yeah. the problem is americans think they can just get that eat that and then just sit in a fucking chair and go why am i gaining weight no it's like think <laughs> it through for fuck's sake <laughs> all right so this is gonna be a little bit scuffed but mickey actually just messaged me about the diet so i'm gonna actually tab real Come quick on. And we're going to see if this guy's oh, like that. He said, oh, shit. Okay, he said, fake news, the pizza diet was only for a month. That's what he said. Nah, nah, He's nah. calling you fake news. No way, no way, <laughs> no way. Oh, Jesus. That is, that is a lie. Just going to okay. say that. I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's, a word, it's a word against a word, so, mm -hmm. I mean, no one nah, really I think he might be happened. biased. Huh? Here's, the, here's, the, here's the tiebreaker. What did Mickey X eat then when you went to Korea? Because there's no way you're getting pasta stuff out every day in Korea. Man. So what was he eating in Korea? Uh, so fortunately for him, there was a Subway round around, right Jesus around the corner. Christ, you go all the way to Korea to eat Subway sandwiches. <laughs> every These day. people are heathens, Tom. Get them the fuck out of the game. And actually, uh, you could ask <laughs> Mickey about it. It's like you the best ask... food in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you, by the way. Uh, but you can ask Mickey about it because uh, what happened was he would get this, he would get the meatballs, the meatball Subway uh, without any... Like the marinara sauce, you know? yeah. yeah. Just, so like it's all, it was, only the salt, only the meatballs, the meatballs, and the the. Okay. I, I don't hundred percent. I think he got the sauce as well, but like no lettuce, no tomatoes, no nothing. <laughs> no, that was that in there. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I mean, of course, you know. <laughs> but I mean, I, 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 I think it may like I, I think you guys could see how if you are if you would understand what what that can do to you on like a performance level. Uh, then uh, it would be frustrating, and that that oh, that is yeah. like something that I had to like keep to myself in a lot of cases, uh, because you just you can't yeah, you don't have these kind teammates. of arguments. Yeah, yeah, like you need your teammate like just as much as I need to perform, my teammate also needs to perform. So uh, it was just like a battle I had with, within myself in a lot of oh, cases, sure. and something that w was a little bit tough tough for me listen that time. you don't have to tell dom he was in a team where i'm a cutie pie i'm guessing there wasn't a lot of discussion about diets and you know healthy lifestyles you know and all what that, you know, like fucking... cutie actually ate so the thing about cutie is he go, go through two phases like he actually like cooks and like eats pretty good food he just doesn't really okay. exercise but the one thing that he did do in korea was just like he would eat he was literally we would call him just the garbage can because he would just eat like whatever was left over for anyone else so oh, i so that's like, nasty that's so, fucking nasty dude so oh, like oh, i would eat nasty. mcdonald's right i would eat mcdonald's right oh, like if we oh, mcdonald's yeah so i would eat mcdonald's and there'd be portions where it would be nasty. like it would be like i would just put it down and it'd be like it'd be there for like you know like whatever until i, I stood up right until i stood up and took it to the trash so maybe it's there for five hours maybe eight hours something like that like half a mcdonald's burger for eight hours and he would just come by like hey you gonna eat that man I'm just going to say, if that's what someone's oh, no. like for dinner, what the fuck are they like sexually? <laughs> the, I, don't, I don't want to think about that. Sorry. All right, we're going to let Mickey X defend it's, himself. Is this the point of the show where we just leave? We're just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I, I don't know, What's man. Okay. Diet? I love Mickey X, like classic game. That's the classic gamer diet. It's like he comes home from Korea. Everyone's like, so what was it like then? He's like, oh, it's a totally different world there. You know, the food's so different. Like the mayonnaise I was getting on the Subway sandwich there was like a little bit more like, are you for real? Like 
Yeah. Dude, like, because the maddest thing is there's so many choices of food in Korea as well. Like, yeah, like but... I always tell people, if you say you don't like Korean food, you just haven't tried enough types. Like, yeah, there's a lot I didn't like, but like, there's so many. That... And the thing about it is, I have to say, Korea is one of the only countries that I ever went to where you can actually eat healthy and it's nice. Like, their food is like fresh vegetables, like not too much like on uh, sauces on the meat and stuff. It's actually just nice. He though. would argue with this. You can man. actually feel like you're doing a good job. It doesn't taste like the shit. You know, it's like would say granola was, bars. It was Kitty would always talk about like he'd be like, well, you know. McDonald's is actually made with a lot of preservatives, so it keeps pretty well. Like, even though this burger's been out for eight hours, it's still just as fresh as it was, you know, originally. So I, that I is one of the nastiest things I've ever heard, mate. That, like, it's one thing. If you Here's the thing, right? Say we tied the two stories together. Say Mickey X was in the team, and he'd just gotten, like, a delicious pasta, and, you know, he just he's finished with it, and then you go, like, oh, can I have the rest that's in the box there? Fucking... This makes it sound like you just put, like, the fucking Big Mac down, and you're like, right, time for Solo Cube. You look around, like... It's just gone. No, 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 no. It, It's not even that. It's you know, Dom, that. it's got a lot of uh, preservatives. It's, <laughs> it's, give it's, me a break. It's, it's that I put it down, and then it's like eight to ten hours later. Of eight to ten hours of just McDonald's sitting out half eaten, you know? And then and then he would eat it. That's what it really is. Also, okay, we're going to let Mickey X defend himself. He said, Come on, Kermit man. Chicken, he said, Subway was breakfast. I got lettuce. Forgive cold. He's a bit old. His memory is fading. So. That's <laughs> like he was trying to do it. Like, dude, no he is way. from the Wizard of Oz. That sounded no like he was trying way. to do a little rhyme there. He was like, <laughs> no forgive way. cold. He's a little bit old. That's all I've been told. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? You're not Dr. <laughs> Seuss, Mickey X. What the fuck's going on there? Uh, I mean, uh... Let, let's let's just say uh, let, let's just say that um, I did not see any lettuce, so maybe he just ate it like on the way up. Secretly, so, yeah, yeah. It's secret lettuce. Holy shit! All right, well I think that's enough about that's uh, yeah. enough about Mickey X's diet and you know the food choices of our our former teammates. Let, let's go into okay. So there's two things that we that we gotta hit. One of them is, is the time that you spend in NA. The other one is obviously uh, the 2019 break. I guess the first thing, because I assume that we'll spend most of the time on um, 2019 and what ended up happening um, like throughout that year for you personally. But let's jump back to 2015. Because 2016, you, you were talking about, you said you almost got relegated your first split here. Um, you're like one game away or like one best of five away from being relegated. You, you know, I, I remember you telling me that you would have been the first player get, to get relegated in NA and EU. So, you know, you're kind of going for that accomplishment, but unfortunately, it wasn't completely... It would have been historical. It yeah. would have been so historical, and it would be something, you know, whenever whenever I would look back on it, back at, at the time uh, as a player, uh, 20 years in, in, the, in the future, that would be something I would be proud of, you know? Yeah. Relegated in both NA and EU. Sounds uh, good. That would definitely be a highlight, you know? So just going into, into like your, your time in NA, obviously you joined NME, you qualified. Were you part of the team? I, I believe you were part of the team that qualified to LCS, right? Like you played in Challenger yeah. briefly. Okay, so you played in Challenger briefly, qualified yeah. with the team into LCS, and then you played NA LCS uh, with a bunch of people with flares, you know. I think, yeah. was, was that when Inax played mid or something? Like, I don't know. It was, yeah. Yeah, so it was, yeah. It, was a, it was a crazy team. Um and yeah, I just wanted to like know about your experiences. Like, how was it playing in NA at that time? Like, could you already tell that it was, you know, worse than EU, or, or what was your perception of, of the region? Um, so to put things into context a little bit, this was uh, I. So I flew to to uh, America uh, a couple of months after I got removed from H2K. So um, I, I got contacted by an NA team that wanted to join. Uh, because I mean, at the time, I actually I did not really have any options, at least good options in EU. So I was like, um, why not try to go to NA? Uh, at that time, it, there was not this like huge uh, uh, NA NA is so much worse than EU uh, kind of perspective that mm -hmm. uh, there is nowadays. So I, I went over there, and um, it was it was a little bit all over the place uh, not gonna lie like from from an organizational standpoint uh, uh it was a little bit crazy like i would so my first encounter was so i, I just finished um uh, it's called gymnasium here in denmark so you it's literally just before you go to university College, yeah. um yeah so i i finished that and then i a half year later i flew to america and uh, i was very excited to go over there and play uh I, I arrived in in San Diego, I, I believe, at the time, because that was where the the house was I was supposed to go to. And uh, I arrived, and uh, I was supposed to get picked up, and no one is there to pick me up. So I'm just I'm standing there for like an so hour looking for. 
<laughs> no, so I mean, I'm I'm in the airport waiting to get picked up by my manager, and I I, I look around and I can't find him, and I, I try to call him, and there's uh, there's nothing happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, so uh, luckily for me, I had printed out the address of where I was supposed to be. So after an hour or something, I I just decided to go there and knock on the door, and I I I just I found out that uh, he overslept, and I uh, <laughs> I get into this room and. Uh, I, I I just I get like this the smallest room I've ever seen where I have I have a desk and I have uh, I have um, a small mattress and a blanket and and a PC to play and that's it and this is this is in in, in California where in in the in around January where it was like a little bit chilly at night mm -hmm. and the it, it was so cold at night. You just sat there and, like literally, I had like three four layers of clothes on because. Um, the building didn't keep the heat so like uh, that was my first th this was my first interaction like literally nice. my first day in the day and i was good. i was like so uh hmm what the fuck am i doing you know <laughs> i was like <laughs> i remember me me on the first in the first night and i uh, it was it was a terrible experience but uh, uh over the time i just i so i just spent like a month in that house just playing soul queue um and spamming the game i think i got to like really high rank in na uh, at the time top 10 or something uh maybe even better uh and so i was i was i was just you know like i just loved the game so i just kept playing and then eventually we would we would move on to a better house and facilities got better and then uh we would have a, a real gaming house and we were just we just won in, in in challenge scene and it was it was when the challenge scene was like super broken where the best team would just like auto qualify we didn't have to. We didn't have to play like a relegation match to get into it. Oh wait, that actually um, sounds so good. What yeah, so you just like auto qualified, and um, it was so insane because uh, I think looking at it, uh, looking at it now, like we didn't really have that great of a team, um, but we got in and it was it was fun. And then we three months later we got relegated, and uh, I went back to EU and got picked up by 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 Splice. So. I mean, it was just like a big. I, I did not ever feel that like NA was like it was at the time. It was like so the scene was so fresh in a, in a lot of ways that it it was hard for me to see like why NA has struggled. But um, uh, there was definitely not the same level of discipline and uh, willingness to put in the hours. Uh, at least from from my perspective, I was putting in a, a lot more hours than. Uh, the people that I was playing with on the same team. Um, so, uh, from like a work ethic standpoint, I, I saw some some issues there. But I mean, the information is so limited because it's only based on the team I was on. So I can't I can't come and say like you know this is why in a in a sucks or whatever you know. So um, yeah. it was just like a it was just like a brief in and out kind of situation. Um, and yeah. That that's just kind of what happened. Nice. What happened, man? Because I remember when you came over, I actually I, I tweeted out. I was like, oh, I think this guy is like, you know, gonna be one of the best jugglers in the split. I remember like I I, I had your back in an interview or something. And then your team gets relegated. Like you just wanted I mean, to make his team look bad. Pretty bad if you look at the lineup. <laughs> like it doesn't look like. like surely he wasn't even that good back. Well, yet. I never even really got to play against Trashy. You know, the, the two games I played against Trashy and LCS, he, he like his team just botched like a two v one, and I was just like super ahead for the rest of the game because his team just didn't know how to play two v one. Like like we never actually got to juggle against each other because the yeah. game was just like a two v one fiesta. So. I mean, I mean, it's hard for me to say like how good I actually was at that time, um, but I, I, I think I think I was like pretty good because I was also high up rated in in solo queue, uh, mm -hmm. and I was playing a lot, uh, so I, I felt like I was good. But um, we, I mean, just the the surroundings and the environment we had was just like we we did not have like we didn't really have a, a coach. We kind of had a coach and the players. I mean. Without I think flaming it mind, wasn't a very could... big org. It was like yeah, that yeah. was one that was like like for example at, at the time this yeah people have to remember even the difference between the top LCS orgs like TSM Cloud9 team well, it was Curse or whatever back then like yeah. the difference between those orgs and yeah. the absolute bottom yeah. ones and the people coming up I mean huge. massive yeah like like you say people sleeping on mattresses on the floor like like in that scenario it's like you're hoping like the team itself has to improve as an org before you can get any better features never mind win LCS. I mean, I was basically living in my suitcase for for like eight months because I I mean I was I just had all my stuff in a suitcase and then 
wherever we went, I would have a, a mattress and a blanket, and that was where I would sleep. And then I would have a I would have a PC and a, and a desk where I could practice, and that was kind of it, you know. I was I was not thinking too much about it because I was happy to play. It was in in that time of 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 your career where just all you want is just to play. So does it really matter what is happening around you? Um, but uh, if I look at it from 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 like a more professional uh, perspective nowadays, it was definitely not the most professional uh, environment we had because there was a lot of partying going on uh, in the weekends, uh, even when we were supposed to play, and a lot of stories that were just like crazy to me that it even happened. Um, uh, but I mean, it was it was fun, you know. Like I had a lot of fun in, in NA, and I I would not trade the experience. We're fun that region, I had. baby. That's us. You know. I mean, I'm I'm I believe in NA. You know, they just need they just need the right people there. You know, yeah. so no, just we gotta work on like teamwork, communication, yeah. <laughs> gameplay, mechanics, uh, mid game, late game, coaching, being Korean. draft, like, yeah, being Korean, better Everything. imports. Besides for all that, we're we're top tier. So. Yeah. No, I, I know what he's talking about as well, because when I came to do those Cloud9 interviews, if anyone can remember back in like season, I think it was like the middle of season five, five. I remember yep. Incarnation had just joined the team. Mm -hmm. I remember I, like Loco invited me to some like, how, I, I can't remember if it was Loco or High or something like that. Someone invited me to like some house party they were hosting. And this is like, by the way, during LCS, like yep. this is like week two of LCS or something like that, just having mm -hmm. a house party on the weekend. And mate, like half the people there were pro players in LCS and the other half were all either like, gamer girls or just complete like fuck boys it was ridiculous and i remember just thinking if these people are doing this every like friday saturday like those same yeah. korean kids are just fucking like so loading up the seven solo queue game in a row like yeah i should have done a bit of threshold <laughs> it's like so how are you gonna beat that guy like he's not any better than you anyway he's got a mad head start on me <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, it was wild. Like, that was, that was like, the fun of being a pro, you know, because it was, like, it was so <laughs> random. Like, it just... I mean, it was, it was, like, I mean, at the time, we didn't really think too much about, like, what I... No, you young guys, of course. Yeah. yeah, you just, I mean, are we having a party? Of course we're having a party, you know, like, yeah. why not, you know? We have it a always... jacuzzi, uh, we have a swimming pool, you know, just come sure. over, you know, it's going to be fun, so, yeah. yeah. And I was just doing shit, like, at this house party, just going up, and because, like, Pig, Piglet at the time was pretending he didn't speak any English. He didn't speak much, to be fair, but he definitely could if he wanted to. He was just, he was just mm -hmm. a fucking moody kid. I was just getting Phoenix, who could speak English, to just translate stuff to Piglet <laughs> as they were, everyone was drinking, just to tilt him, like... So how did you manage to have a bigger eagle than Faker? Like, <laughs> just shit like that. And then he'd, like, be thinking, like, the translation was wrong, like... Oh, what do it? And then they'd be saying it again, and he'd be like... <laughs> and uh, I was looking all like, <laughs> just drinking like fucking. Yeah, you know, I thought that, that was like that was the craziest part about meeting Piglet was actually knowing that his perception of season three worlds was that <laughs> yes. like he was legitimately the hard carry of the team, and that Faker yeah. was like mediocre. No, that he Faker thinks, was he thinks Faker was like Korean poor belt, and he was like, listen, yeah. you did your job, Faker, but would you get the fuck out of him? Yeah. Give me the ball and get out of my way. Yeah, he was on some shit like that. Yeah, no, no, but it, it was actually <laughs> like that. Like people think it was like a meme or something, I know. but. It was seriously like he thought he was like the one v nine hard carry of the team, <laughs> and then Faker was like just some fucking piss random. Like it was like yeah, I mean whatever. I mean I won the world championship with that guy, but he's he's just like, he's an okay player because like you know to us like when he joined when he joined Curse season four, it's like oh my god, dude, you played with Faker. Like he's the best player of all time. Like how was awesome. that experience? Like did you learn a lot? Like was it crazy? How did it feel to just always have like your mid solo killing every single game for like an entire year? He's like yeah, that guy was okay. I'm a fucking carry lord though, so. Get out of my way! Like, camp my fucking lane! Like you, na dipshit! And like, it's just... glorious though. Like, if it wasn't for the fact, like, in your case, he's your teammate. You're gonna have to work with that guy. Like, this is a story. It's brilliant though. Like, yeah, it sounds hilarious. As a character. I actually didn't mind playing with Piglet that much. Like in game, I thought it was like pretty good, but it was just so impossible to like have any team identity. You know, like class. Like, imagine, so, you know, like, the way that you kind of described Wonder, where you're like, it's impossible to like mm. argue with this guy. Like, it's almost pointless because he's just good, like so set in his ways. Mm. Playing with TL was like playing with four wonders. That's what it was like. It was like, okay, so I got a wonder in every lane. So what, what, like, no one's ever going to be happy, you know? The only time yeah. that people are happy is when, like, the enemies just can't play the game. Like, we would just, the only way, like, if you remember the, the team that we played on, essentially the way that we would win, we had no cohesion at, in general at all, right? It was just we had top two players in every role, 
and we would just try to like 1v1 beat the enemies. It was like four just 1v1s. Win. Yeah, no problem, right? <laughs> Those all three people in their lane, Dom. You're always doing a good job, mate. Yeah. Weird how that works, isn't it, for the jungle roll? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's pretty much what it was. It was like, okay, I got to shit on the jungler. You got to shit on mid. You got to shit on bot. And you got to shit on top. And if any of you don't do it, then it's a draft problem and you're going on a tank next game. So like, it was just such a weird situation to be in. But uh, I guess that's enough about that's 2015. You know, um... Something yeah, I mean, there's not too much to, to there. There's not too much to to talk about. It was just like, as I said, like quick in and out. Yeah, kinda. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I think it's good because that was like the the beginning of your professional career. That was the first time you played mm -hmm. in like a tier one league. So I figured it'd be um, good to bring up. So we've talked about 2016, 2017 briefly. 2015, 2018 was like a whatever year in in my opinion. 2019 yeah. is the big year that we where we should go to now um, for you because this is what most of the people want to hear about. So. You joined Origin, um, you guys ended up finishing top two, you went to finals, uh, even like people thought that Fnatic was um, still going to be really good, even with Caps being off the team. You guys actually beat them in um, the like lower bracket finals or yeah, whatever, yeah. and then you go into the winner bracket finals, you play against G2, you actually were considered one of the best junglers in the league at that split, and this was like only a year ago. Um, and, you know, I think you actually had a pretty good series versus Yankos, right? Like, it was, it was some good play overall, so... Um, you know, you, you, you were doing super well. Then Origin had this, like, catastrophic collapse in summer. No one really knew what happened. Um, you ended up kind of disappearing for health issues, like, right before the end of the split. And then we didn't hear for you from, for you from a year. So I just kind of want to, like, be taken through the whole process because you were, you know, you were topping the league pretty recently. So, you know, that, yeah. it's a competitive fucking league. People want to know. Oh, start with this. What, how did you actually even get into that OG lineup? Because everyone else in the lineup pretty much was like big, big names, like loads of a company. You, as we said, as Dom said, that you can in this story, like 2018 is the least interesting year of your career. It was kind of where you were like trying to pick it back up again. So how did you get into OG? Like who, who brought you in? Why why did you get the offer? Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of weird because the the 2018 year in UL, uh, I actually like just from my own personal performance, I was actually playing well, uh, even though we were struggling as a team, and that made me somehow uh, attractive to a lot of teams going into 19. Um, I so like uh, it was not. Just because I had like a mediocre year from a team perspective in 18, I actually just from uh, my own value, I actually, uh, I it's actually. Best year wrote, for you, right? I yeah, you like told it, me that one time. Yeah, so I, I think um, that made me attractive to some teams, and then when Origin came in, uh, and at the time I spoke with them, I was still Astralis, so uh, it was it was kind of like a. A perfect match for me because uh, Danish. Uh, from a lot of the stories I've told before, uh, one thing that I care a lot about is, is some of the stuff that, that happens out of the game um, and kind of the philosophy of um, taking care of yourself uh, and also uh, looking to bring more ex more aspects of of performance to to your team rather than just you're just a player and you're playing and that's it. Um, so it was very interesting to me, and then obviously Martin uh, De Fischer was was the was the manager of the team and a guy that I always have talked a lot with. Uh, also during my time when I when I did broadcasting at at certain finals, so um, we were in discussions, and for me it was just a perfect match. So I I was pushing hard to to get into the team, and they wanted to get me. So uh, I was actually one of the first pieces to to get on that team um together with with the nuke i believe um and and then the team just kind of built from there you know uh when in in an off season as it's always hard because you need especially as a new they were a new team so they needed pieces to get on the team before other people would start signing sure, and then, to attract them uh, yeah, of yeah yeah so um i was i was one of the first and then the, the, the team kind of just got got built and i was um, I remember at the time I was like really happy with the team. I thought it looks uh, banging had... those list of players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, this was probably uh, this was uh, about to be at least from my perspective it was about to be like uh, the best possible year uh, for me of because uh, I had I had star players. I had a lot of uh, experienced players. It was also the time where it was the first time where I was on a team where I was not either the oldest or the most experienced guy when every team i've been on before that i was always uh, that that 
yeah, yeah. I was always the, the guy that people would look to in terms of... How old are you to... right now, though? You're 25? Uh, 25, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, nice so I, I was always Continue. like a leader on, 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 on the teams I was on. So it was a, kind of like a little bit of a shift for me because suddenly I didn't need to be that leader. We had uh, Miffy on the team and we had Nuke on the team that had played... Uh, together before and were is very strong opinionated about like uh, about the game so it was easy to me so at the start it was it was really nice like we we got into to we, we started boot camping and i remember in the in the december when we started boot camping we we scrimmed against this like the the really hyped uh, misfits team uh that it was was Max Law, Febby, yeah, the super team, um, so as, Gorilla, and we, Hansama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the first, so when we just started scrimming, we went twenty zero against them in scrims, uh, and Damn. they just uh, they had no they had no chance. We were, did you know we, they we sucked back scrapping. then? Like, or did you, or were you like, oh, we're just that fucking good? <laughs> exactly. Like, we're just yeah. I, mean, world, baby. Let's do this. I mean, it's it's hot. I mean, obviously, with results like that, that's very unusual. That almost never happens. Uh, so either we were just like really good, or they were just very, very bad. Um, and I, at I, at the time, we thought they were just not that great. Um, okay. So you it was, guys, it was like it. yeah. So I mean, spring actually spring started out for us kind of weak because we we had some we we were struggling a bit. I remember uh, especially uh, Miffy was struggling a bit with with. He emptied a bunch. Yeah, I mean, he he had some some confidence issues because of his time in in TSM. NA. TSM, TSM just makes a lot of sense Betty. because he, I mean, it it was a tough year for him. Um, so, but we as a group we we stayed very supportive, and throughout like the middle of spring, we just suddenly there was like a switch, and then we just we just started beating everyone, and we were just we were we were a lot of people uh, that were watching us. Uh, had like this perspective of us as like kind of a boring team because we were just out macro teams and play smart league, and that was just kind of how we we got most of our wins in in spring, and then uh, we had a really good uh, playoffs run, and uh, even though we went uh, zero six against D uh, two, I still think we the time, mate. come on, no one yeah, we had we had i remember the first series we had against them in the upper bracket uh, final there's a couple um, of good games in that one yeah like that's it like that series specifically it was, was yeah, even game though we lost zero three was right there was a lot of good games uh, what did yes. you say uh you you jungled um uh you out jungled yankos in the jarvin rexai matchup i remember that like pretty specifically yeah. like triple buffed him yeah. like just was really you're running the game like, yeah. just because someone gets 3-0 doesn't mean, like, all three... Like, even the last finals that G2 just played Fnatic, that wasn't like they stomped them every game. Like, some of those games are close. Yeah. So, like, I always feel people just look at the scores on Gamepedia and just ignore all history. Because I agree, the problem is everyone's going to remember the final where they did just, like, smurf completely. But, no, the upper bracket final one was legit, from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was close. very close. And then, uh, obviously, we got to... We played finals in Rotterdam, and we played against Fnatic, and we, we beat them 3-1. And uh, we, we felt like we... Even though we lost zero uh, three to to G two, we actually we felt like we could actually take games of them. Uh, but then we got into the series in the final, and uh, it, it was it was at the time when there was the Lux Sona meta, and uh, uh, that was the funnel strats, and yeah. you know it was it was like it was all over the place. And um, so the first two games we lost because of those two strats, and then. Uh, we were just like kind of out of it, honestly. Um, they were just much better than us at at being creative. So whenever, uh, whenever, uh, whenever the game would be decided based on creativity in draft and and in game, then we would just lose to them. Um, but if we could make the game more uh, more standard in a way, then we would have a much better chance. And uh, that was just not the case in that final. So we just got crushed. But uh, it was. Uh, one of the biggest moments in my career to play play there, apart from being in the in the world uh, at at the world championship. So um, I I felt like I was playing some of the best league I've played. I felt like our team was playing well, and I think that's just, that's probably something. If you look at my career uh, throughout the years, is that if my team is performing well, then I will also be performing well. Um, so but, you play jungle, is what you're saying? Uh, n not it's it's more about this the style of jungling that I. That I play um, because you can also play well, like on a losing team, you can also look good as a jungler. Very but closer. Uh, my, 
my perspective on jungle uh was always if i like if i was if the team was in a good state then i would perform much better um but uh so um that was kind of what what happened in, in spring and then we we got into we got into the summer split and felt pretty good about it you know we got second place and uh, our goal was to go we to started the, off and... the split pretty well if people don't remember it was just the end yeah, yeah. so badly yeah, yeah i mean we had that was the i remember very uh, apparent that we had the that was the rift rivals um it was like a couple of weeks into the split we went to rift rivals and you invest um, in the team i i mo probably most uh, most na people and na players will probably not remember that uh, event because of how much oh, you absolutely destroyed yes. na at that event uh, it's it rift rivals it, was, it doesn't matter it got to the point where uh, I mean, we, we we got to the point, you know, like what do we actually play to make these games competitive? There were some troll right picks there. in those games yeah, yeah. by the EU teams as well. It was really <laughs> yeah. embarrassing. Pike jungle. Uh, we, we TSM only... lost the Pike jungle. That's a that's a yeah. username in my chat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were just uh, everyone. Every EU team was having a blast off off uh, off stage because of how the event was. Uh, it got to a point where, like, in in the only game we lost was because I uh, I was playing. I was I was like this. Is we have to challenge ourselves so i locked in leeson i didn't have i didn't have any leeson games for for three weeks and uh as i told before if if i was supposed to play champion world then i had to put in some hours on it uh so i, I just locked it in i like let's let's try this and how i played one of the like worst games i've ever seen <laughs> and then we <laughs> lost so <laughs> that was that was a fun time um but yeah so um so that was that, and then we got back, and we we were then we got back to to EU, and um, we were struggling a lot uh, with finding a way to to get wins. Um, and I think a lot of ways when when you go from being a team that wins or get to like second place, and then suddenly you are uh, fighting even to get into players, there's a lot of there's a lot of stress building up within a team of how how do you how do we just get wins you know like what is it actually what are we good at what do we want to what how do we uh, what, what do we do because we were just losing and uh it was not like a clear reason why we were losing um where was the coach in this by the way because one thing i've never actually found out because obviously he won like coach of the split i think in the spring split that year whether what, what was giotto like as a coach what was his style what was his like approach to doing shit um i mean he was a guy that would bring a lot of uh he would he would be a much like a facilitator so um with the personalities we had on the team he would much he would be just facilitating conversations uh because uh i'm i'm a guy that has uh strong opinions about stuff then you have um miffy at miffy obviously also very opinionated mm -hmm. um Nuke Dog uh, in certain aspects of the game is very opinionated, um, and then uh, Alfari and Patrick were more uh, just followers in a sense. So uh, he he, I mean his biggest uh, his biggest problem, I guess, or um, struggle was to make sure that everyone was aligned in in the game because you have a lot of opinions, so you need to make sure everyone is on the same page, and that is that is somewhere where we. We often struggled uh, because of past experiences or um, stuff like this. So uh, I mean, we were just not playing well, um, and we were trying to find a way to to get better. And um, this is at the time where I also I was starting to feel um, some of the the issues that uh, later on made me uh, have to to step back um, and. Uh, long long story short about it it's just uh with kind of if you look at it if you look at the the way uh league pros careers there's a lot of stress involved with with performing um yeah. social media um and sometimes also within a team so uh within a team there can be people that push you and try to get the most out of you and sometimes that that helps you sometimes it just makes you push even more and my general philosophy uh throughout my entire life has always been if 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 you start if if you start struggling then you just push even more you know because mm -hmm. why not uh 
uh, kind of like the mentality of being Superman in a way, like nothing can beat you. Like as long as you put in the hours and grind it out and uh, try to fix the issues you have, then uh, you eventually will come out on the other side uh, better. Um, and so that's what I did. Uh, but uh, I started having a lot of like physical pain at the time. And um, when we played our last, when we played our last uh, game, um, I remember uh, I remember that that game very clearly. Right? Like we played against SK at the time, and we had to win to go into playoffs, and we ended up losing. Uh, and I, I remember like I walked out of the stage and usually as a player when you play the game I bet you can also recall this a lot Dom when you walk out of a game that you played you can instantly like recognize like two three points of like this is why he lost you know mm-hmm. um, and I, I remember walking out of the stage and my, my head was just like blank I, I didn't even recognize like what happened uh, and <laughs> that was where like all these symptoms of, of pushing yourself for, for a lot of years and the the extra stress of the the performance or the the lack of of good performance throughout summer came in, and that is kind of where I I got into like a a, a breaking point in a way. So uh, what after were that, the physical symptoms yeah. like like specifically? Uh, a, a lot was of things. I mean, everything. Was it basically I mean, burnout? By the way, where you essentially like uh, like it's actually like a in theory there's a real like medical term. It's like like uh, physical exhaustion or something like that. It's called you know. Where your I mean, body just says I'm done. I mean, this topic is like so hard to uh, speak about uh, in in good context because it's so individual. Like everyone, right, okay. everyone is individual. So sure. for me, it's there's a lot of also uh, personality personality traits that makes you more vulnerable to uh, stress in in general. Okay. Um, but um, so my pers- personality, which uh, often is. I, I can be very, uh, I have a lot of empathy, empathy with people. And uh, so I can fe- I, I sense a lot of stuff in a room. And often my response is that I, I want to make Fix everyone it. feel better in, in a room. So uh, at the time, obviously, because we we're struggling, there was a lot of emotions and a lot of stress. And I was trying to fix as much as, much as possible uh, as I could. But in the end, that actually made me perform even worse because uh, I was taking on too many things, um, and but uh, so back to to your question about it. Um, uh, I, I I was like I was so out of it in in my head, and I had so I had a lot of issues in my neck, uh, my 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 shoulders, and uh, I had small anxiety attacks. Um, I had a ton I, of those. Uh, uh, yeah. So and then. Um, I the worst thing like I could push through that that was not a problem but um, uh, it got to a point where after that game we got back uh, and we had a week off because we're out of playoffs and we had to prepare for for the gauntlet for the, whatever yeah the gauntlet run yeah so we had a week off and I took a week off and just try to reflect on things and and I got back to 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 the to to practice and I started like we I was practicing for like two hours. And I started getting like the craziest headache I've ever had. So like, uh, and again, as I said before, my my usual response was just like, uh, push take harder. some, yeah, like just push push through it and see if like maybe maybe tomorrow will be better. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, I remember w- those days like I would I would go play uh, scrims for for a, a couple of of hours and head back straight to to my apartment and sleep for like fifteen hours because. Uh, that was just the only thing that I could possibly do to to make my situation better. Uh, so again, I did the same the next day, and I could only do it for like uh, for like one hour or something, and then I had to just cancel the the block and go back to doing the same. And then then all of the then I had to like start going to a to a doctor to get a feel for it. And um, uh, I was I was they said like I have very all of my symptoms are very. Uh, symptoms of like severe stress, stress symptoms yeah. and um the only logical thing to do for my health was just to to step back from it uh and uh, i i know a lot of people will be looking at it from like why didn't anyone step in or why, why didn't anyone see this happening or something but i literally didn't see it myself before it was too late so uh and that's it's something like 
I my idea of sharing the story is not for someone to look at it like um, I feel bad for him. Yeah, 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 because it's more about sharing the awareness that because of how stressful it can be to be a league player, it's so important to recognize some of the symptoms and also implementing stuff that will de-stress you. So um, I think one very good quote uh, that uh, one of my... So I've been working a lot with a stress coach about how to manage my life better. Uh, it's basically like as much as you as much of, of the hours where you push throughout the day you should think at this that you need to spend as many hours trying to to recover and and rest uh, and that is something i haven't haven't uh, done uh, throughout oh, my years even though that. yeah even though i have been very much aware like it's so it's so weird to me in a way that it happened to me because i was trying as much yeah, you said you were trying to eat healthy and get maximized. Yeah, yeah. So, maximized so I was yeah. like, I was so in the start, I was like, so um, I was like, I, I just refused that this is something that happens to me. Um, but what I learned over time is that it, it's, it's, it, there can be so many reasons for it, and uh, I have, I have learned so much about myself in in this period of time, uh, where, and also some one of the reasons why I, I start, I stopped doing it uh, or retired from playing because. Uh, you have to start asking yourself uh, what what is worth it for you to do in in your job. Like I, I, I don't, I'm not looking to kill myself. I want to have a good life. So um, uh, good it was hear. just it was yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I'm to find that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that might that might seem a little bit. It's all right. Uh, we know what you meant. We know. You yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not like that, you know. But <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's just I, I got so much uh, wiser about how how I work and how I work doesn't mean that it's how everyone should be working or how it everyone should manage their lives. But um, uh, as I said, like I'm, I got much uh, wiser about how I should be doing things uh, going going forward. So, um, and also uh, like I, I always believe that quitting or like giving up is something that you need a pussy or something yeah. yeah it's just not acceptable so uh at the time i was it was very hard for me to take this like it was probably the hardest decision i've ever taken in my life because i, I was it was just it was just not something that i would ever do it's mm-hmm. just not it from a from a, a personal perspective this is just not acceptable in a way uh but uh there was just no other option um so that is that is kind of uh, what happened to me, but but now I'm 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 all good, you know. I spent I spent like seven months away from a PC, uh, away from the game, uh, and uh, that really helped me. And that's also why I was very much away from from social media and uh, everything because my only my only concern was or my only objective basically was to uh, make sure that I would be feeling as as good as possible and recover as sure. as good as possible. Uh, and then you have to block out as as much stuff that that is unnecessary in your life. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that is that is basically. I know that was a long, uh, long right. ass, uh, talk, right, but um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I just I, sure. I mean, I, w- I would love to know like when you actually made the decision to not play pro anymore. Was it like immediately as soon as you went into the situation? Like you started working with the stress mm-hmm. coach, you're like, yeah, I'm just never gonna play again. Or like, when did? Because that was something yeah. that obvi- like. Even when I was a streamer, there was still a long period of time where I was going through the ment- like the like ideas in my head. Am I ever going to play another game again? Am I going to play another pro- professional yeah. game? And eventually, I came to that conclusion. So, like, when did you know for sure like you had played your last professional game? Uh, maybe a month ago. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So. So when you tweeted, um, pretty much when you were just like. Yeah, not. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. Uh, maybe two months, probably. But mm-hmm. uh, at first, uh, which makes a lot of sense, was like. I just need a little bit of break, you know, like just a minute, need a couple of months break and then I'll be back and everything will be good. Uh, but um, because of how difficult it is to, it's not that, and that is probably the toughest part of it all is like, you don't, you, you don't break a leg and then you get told, you know, in two months, you'll be, your leg will be fine and then you can start working. It, that mm-hmm. That's not how it works. Uh, you are, you get to a point where you are not you are not in control. You can just do the things that uh, will uh, help recover just you. Increase as much the chance, possible. right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, at at first, like I, I I thought, 
you know, in three months in the next next season, I'll be back and uh, I'll be fine. But uh, as time went on and and um, I was still struggling with, with a lot of uh, a lot of the symptoms I had, um, I could see kind of how it, it, it would go. And that's also why I had to um, terminate my, my contract eventually. Um, but so like uh, the hard part is, is the not knowing factor. And that can that is I'm not going to lie. That is that is probably the toughest part of it all, because I, I had no clue like what would what would actually what would actually happen or how fast I would uh, recover from it. Um, so I could go by a month and do all the right things without feeling necessarily better. And then one day to another, then I would be 5% better or 10% better. And then, uh, that's just kind of how, it, how it was. So, um, what happened to me during the last couple of months was that, uh, since the season, uh, basically if you want to be part of, of, of a team, uh, whether it's a player or, or, uh, or staff, then you have to be part of it either from the start of the season or maybe in between splits, but that is very rare. Um, so I was like, uh, I'll just try to look for other things that I, I find interesting. So I started uh, reading a lot on, on on some of the qualities that a coach can bring to a team. And I found it very, very interesting, so like personal development, uh, leadership, uh, habits um sports some some sports science some looking at some of 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 the good coaches in the sports world like what 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 they have learned over the years any Uh, coaches that you really like look up to like do you have like a phil jackson there like a you know greg popovich uh, like somebody who you just look up to? no not not specifically but uh i'm i'm actually i actually got his book i didn't read it yet but uh, i'm i it's it's there's no like specific specific person uh yet uh i'm just trying to drag as many perspectives as i can mm-hmm. uh but so it's what good, i did good. over the summer was uh one of my one of my friends from from splice uh Senkooks, was playing in a, a team in nlc and they were struggling a bit so i um I asked if they needed some help, so I was doing, so I was do, doing this this research or whatever you want to call it myself, and uh, they uh, they were struggling. So I was like, let me see what I can do, you know, because uh, my my perspective on doing doing things is always like I, I'm more into like trying, like learning by doing, or like you have to try something before you actually know if it's something you like or can or can excel at. Um, so I, I helped them out for like a month and a half, uh, in, in the NLC and they, they were, they were slumping a bit and then they ended up getting, getting second place and beating, uh, one of the academy teams, uh, which I thought was, was very good by them. Like, uh, our, yeah, yeah. Um, sadly they, they lost, uh, to, uh, LDLC in, in the last game, uh, before reaching EO Masters. So that was a little bit sad, uh, but. Uh, I I enjoyed it a lot. Like I found it, I found it was it was fun. And uh, a big a big thing for me is like when you find something you like to do that uh, you don't you you will do even though you are like you would you, you don't paid. have to force your, yeah you don't have to force yourself to do work. You're just doing it because you find it you you think it's it's interesting or fun. And and those are kind of the uh the the things that i would like to push towards doing myself so um so that's kind of where the the coaching the coaching idea came in um and then uh, i also and then from like a playing side of it i uh there's i don't know if you guys do you guys watch uh cycling Oh, Definitely no. not. Is that even a real fucking question? Like, like Tour de France or like <laughs> what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, Tour de, Fran- <laughs> Tour de France. Okay, I know that was a little bit weird, uh, but uh, okay. So in in cycling, <laughs> so since you guys don't know it, I'll give you guys a little bit of a uh, little bit of information. So in cycling, the best cyclers uh, in the world are the ones that can push through the pain. So when they go when they go uphill. It's a lot about being able to push through the pain and just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Um, and that was like a Danish uh, p- uh, professional, uh, former professional, uh, cy- do you call it a cycler? Nah. Cyclist. Uh, cyclist. 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 There it is. Um, that said, when you when you stop as a cyclist, uh, it's when you, un- you can't push through the pain, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, so uh, I think as a league player, if you don't have the 
the eagerness or the the willingness to push uh, these 15 20 games a day if you don't have that desire then i i feel like it's just not it's it maybe that's the time when you should you should quit or stop doing it and uh, what i recognize is that i just I don't have that desire anymore. I, do, I don't necessarily know why. Maybe it's because of the things I've been going through, but that is just something that I've observed uh, with myself. So um, it was, because of that, it was very clear to me that uh, I think this is the right time for me to, to do something else. Uh, By the way, if people don't know, because obviously it's super infamous, the only thing people know about cycling, sadly, mate, is like Lance Armstrong doing all those steroids and winning the championship. Yeah, what yeah. they don't get right is that's where they don't understand steroids. Like, the real purpose of steroids, and personal steroid is like a term from the 80s. Like, they're not using exactly that drug. They're, like, for example, most of them were doing the thing where you, like, freeze your blood or whatever and spin it and round it, and then it, like, increases the platelets or some shit, right, which makes it more oxygenated. What they're really doing that for is what he's saying here. It's an endurance sport. It's not a sport like basketball like if in basketball it's awesome if you run up and jump over a guy and slam that's fun like what he's saying there the, the guy who's winning the race is going through the most pain so what he's actually using the steroids for is just to recover quicker to not be as wrecked the next time he goes out there so like mm -hmm. that's a to me that's one of the stupidest sports like i don't know the point of it you know it's like you just get wrecked the whole time and at the end it's like yeah you endured the most pain you win like what the fuck like do i still get a mansion like yeah i guess you can just lie in a fucking mansion like, oh, God, for like nine months till the next fucking race or whatever it's shit isn't it? And you have but to go I, around France. Jesus but Christ. I thought the the I mean it it gave me at least a perspective to what why why it, it, like not be what you were going through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like I I, I like to draw uh, parallels from other uh, people or uh, situations that you can kind of put perspective on your own life. So that that made a lot of sense to me. Um, oh. So that that is that is kind of how I I view it. And then yep. also, I, I just think um, that uh, to elevate the game and uh, the league in general, I think we need we need players that have um, some kind of motivation to be coaches, to step into those roles. Um, because it's as much as coaches can, like a, a lot of uh, people that haven't been a player can bring a lot of perspective to coaching and I have a lot of respect for coaches. Um, there's just something unique to be able to that you have been going through some of the same stuff that a player goes through. Players make the uh, best that, coaches. Uh, period. That's my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I I don't disagree, you know, but uh, yeah. I, I think you need you need time, like, and that's also so like for example, I'm not uh, I'm not gonna be looking straight at like uh, head coach positions or something like this because I think uh, as a as someone that has like I haven't done it. Uh, professionally in some aspects so there's a lot of uncertainties about like what to actually bring to a team uh i think it's much better to kind of grow into the role yeah, and you gotta learn. it's another thing to learn because, yeah because in normal in normal sports conditions you you if you go from a player to a coach then you go through years of educating yes. educating yourself and people don't that, know in soccer you literally do courses where you learn like badges yeah. like you're a little kid in fucking scouts and that's how you get to become exactly. a pro coach yeah I, i'm pretty sure it takes like three years normally to to go through that phase so and that is just not because of the scene the scene is so young that is just not something that is there oh, of um, course. there's no pathway so, in that sense yeah yeah so I, I think as long as you're eager to learn and you have the the like a broad perspective on on and and obviously also some ideas of what what you can bring then that is a good standpoint but if if you don't you need ideas to put in to be put into action before they actually uh, are valuable in any sense so uh, i have a lot of ideas that i would like to implement but and some of them are probably going to be shit some of them are going to be good but um uh, i i'm just looking for a place where they're willing to to try uh to elevate the game and not I just think follow it You'll be a good coach. Here's the thing. What you need to do is use your strength, which, like you said before, your fucking ability is, like, empathizing with people. You can be, like, Professor X. You can just come in. Start coaching OG, mate. Just come in, like, Luke, Doc, I'm feeling a lot of resentment inside you. He was like, no, 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 don't look away from me, Luke, Doc. Why do you always go to the sideline? Why are you always by? Why not come with your friends? Come, like, you could, you could unlock him like fucking Professor X Wolverine. You like that? <laughs> I mean, what? I like, what? Uh, I like, your, I, I like that a lot, but... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if that works, but uh, <laughs> I I appreciate I appreciate it, uh, foreign. I I really Sorry. do appreciate it. 
Um, I'll think about it, okay? I've got a lot of good ideas, that's all I'm saying, you know, ship me out. So, so one question that came up for me is like, how do you feel about like, you know, the stress that comes with coaching? Because obviously like coaches go through a lot of the same things, stressful team yeah. environment, like, you know, you're going to do, I mean, it's so like in this, in this esport, right? It feels like you only get negativity, really. Like if your team wins, people will be like, oh, I think you're kind of a good coach, but we don't really know it, what he does. So, you know. Yes. We can't really like blame him. And then like if a draft happens that ends up bad, like the whole community's like, yeah, what the fuck was that draft, man? Fire this dude immediately. So like you, there's obviously a lot of stress that comes with coaching a team. You're in the same environment, same pressure. Uh, yeah, so social media, all that type of stuff. Like, do you think that this will at all like trigger some of the things that you've, you went through before? Or do you think that it just like the stress of not actually physically being out there and like being a little bit behind the scenes will be a good enough like distance? Uh, again, I think... It's it's a uh, it's a very good question, and uh, you know I could say like no, that will never happen, but that's just a that's that's just a lie. Like I, I again I I will not know it before I'm I'm actually in it, but uh, I have learned so many new things that I can, or t rather like a lot of new tools that I can use that will help me prevent uh, those kind of situations. And then I also think that uh, even though there's a lot of a lot of stress on coaches to uh, empower the players to perform. And obviously, uh, the first one that I will always be looked at often is, is the coach. Like, what is the coach actually doing? Is, is he, what is he bringing to the team and or, or why are they performing so, so poorly? Um, but uh, I, I think the general workload of, of, a, of a player is just a little bit higher and the, the the pressure to perform is is less uh, on a coach. Uh, in the end, coaching is all about making the player shine as much as possible. It's it's not about yourself shining. So, I, I think there are definitely clear uh, differences. Um, but to answer your question, I have no clue. But all I know is that I'm better tool to go through the same stuff again. So, that is the that is the boring the boring answer. But uh, also kind of the the the, or the honest answer about it. Yep, sounds good. I mean, I guess I guess that's the best the best policy, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean that that's that's also why I mean initially when I left the scene, I knew eventually I would be talking about what I went through because I think we need transparency in some way uh, because of of just like the unknowns and about like how does a league like a player that plays league professionally in 10 years how is that guy gonna look you know we don't we don't really know oh, so we can only yeah. yeah so we can only i mean we can only learn from the experiences that they go through and that doesn't mean that every league player will go through something that i went through not at all i don't even think but i think it's definitely a concern uh and something to be aware of when you are a player so uh, that is kind of like what i want to to bring to that discussion uh, is is just to bring some awareness to the topic. Yeah, for sure, makes a lot of sense. All right, well, I mean, this is normally where we end up wrapping up the show, but we, we just like to give the floor to you. If you have any topic that, like, you know, we didn't get to cover, was there anything you wanted to speak on on the show that we didn't um, get into? If not, we just end it here. But if there's something that you came on the show, you're like, oh, I wanted to talk about this, we didn't end up doing it. Like, let us know now. Um, no, I think we covered we covered more stuff. I mean, I've got um, a question for you. Here we go. Yeah. Who was go the ahead. most underrated teammate you ever had? Who never got credit but was actually legit good? Who, who would you pick for that? He's going to say Sandcox. The first that comes to mind is uh, Exile. Oh, shit. Oh, the, the German midlander? I, he always used to get flamed to fuck, yeah. Yeah, I, actually, you know, you talk I about? agree yeah, with that. I always, I always felt like he was like decent at what he um, did, but he just like entered randomly and people just hated him. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, I, I don't think he's playing much anymore. I, I don't. I haven't spoken to him after the UL days, but um, he he was a guy that got very. I could see how the public perception and the public pressure got to him in a way that uh, he lost confidence in himself, in in himself, and that hurt his play a lot because he was a confident based player. Uh, if people recall him, like he would. A lot of times he would make plays that I didn't even re recognize, but uh, playing with him was actually very enjoyable for me because he's. I, I know you have spoken a lot uh, with uh, players or like mid laners specifically, like the difference between a mid laner that more plays for himself rather than 
uh, a mid laner that is constantly like talking about like pushing waves, rotating, creating stuff. Uh, um, and he was a guy that always was very uh, knowledgeable about his point of view or like his lane and also how he can impact the game and also uh, uh, calling stuff ahead of time and actually being very smart about some things in, in the game. So uh, if I would call one guy, it would be him. Um, and sadly, he's I don't think he's he's playing much anymore. But and and that is also like some 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 things that the this the, the social media pressure of social media sometimes hurts hurts players performance. Uh, but he was a guy that I would have loved to see play uh, without the burden of on his shoulders of, of the 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 pressure from 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 the social from like social media and stuff yeah yeah i mean i always had positive opinion of the guy i mean this guy really did have some 1v9 performances that people would just like kind of sweep yeah. under the rug like his rise was clean you know like but, yeah, yeah i mean i guess uh you in a couple times and you know everyone just says you're bad forever so makes sense um but yeah, I guess that will uh, conclude the episode. This one wasn't focused as much on like the league game specifically. We're in a break before um, Worlds. We don't even know Worlds groups at the time of filming this. So you know, I mean, we can we can go over like any predictions that you have. Or we got you know, a wild one. Have you got anything crazy? Yeah, you got any wild predictions before we we get into the actual like group stage? Because obviously Just, at this point uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, we don't know the groups, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I think TSM will make it out of groups. Holy Why did you shit! Say something like that. Why? Come on, give us a reason. Give us a reason. Come on. Yeah, um, just, to troll. just just because foreign 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 will See, be like be GSM will never that. make it out. There we go. Uh, oh, <laughs> actually, I so uh, I know it's, NA gets a lot of hate, and I'm I'm I mean, if you're an NA fan fan, you know, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for for just I mean for you in a in a sense. But um, <laughs> oh shit, okay, is that <laughs> <laughs> okay? That's uh, like a third. Think, it's almost like if you think... can actually be compassionate to them and they just flame to be even harder. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm so sorry okay, for I'll whatever happens. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> but I actually think uh, from watching how TSM kind of grew the last couple of weeks better. in playoffs, mm -hmm. yeah. I think at least their per perception of how the game is supposed to be played. I They're think the best three don't bring... matter by the end, right? Yeah, yeah, and also they are looking to challenge. Um, I think they're looking to challenge the early game in a way that it, other NA teams are not looking to do. So I think that will help them on on the world stage. Uh, so um, I actually have a lot of. I, I I actually think TSM will will do quite well if they keep this uh, their form from from playoffs up. So that's why I legitimately think they will get out of groups. Okay. Yeah, until you see until you see the Gen G uh, JD G group with yeah, yeah, with mad lines in it. Let's let's talk in a in a couple of days. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll see if you revisit this once the group trials uh, are are done. I actually went on a couple of shows. I have the same opinion. I think TSM has the best chance to obviously get out, mainly just based off seeding, right? Like the fact that you get the the pool one mm. seed. Uh, it's it's really just dependent on what you draw from there. If you're able to somehow draw like uh the pool three PCS team, that's like what I've been saying a lot of times. You're gonna get one LPL, one EU, assuming that nothing crazy happens in play uh, plans. So if you're able to get that that PCS team and maybe Mad Lions, then you have a shot. You have a legitimate like 50-50 shot of getting out of group. So, um, I I agree. I think TSM is is the best team from from NA. I mean, my main opinion of of NA in general, and the reason why I've been so hard on them is because two years ago. And they did end up getting to semifinals of Worlds. And then for some reason, like, we're now okay with not even getting out of groups. It's like, oh, but, like, why can't we just appreciate NA for what it is? It's like, what NA is is a major region that spends millions of dollars importing players from around the world to try to have the most competitive shot at a World Championship as possible. That's what NA is. So this idea that, like, we can be okay with mediocrity, I just don't, like, subscribe to that. Like, sure, if we want to do that, then don't import. Just only play NA players, and then we could make all the fucking excuses that we had before and, you know, deal with the results like that. But, I mean, I just want to see, like, these teams actually make a deep run, and I don't feel like any of the NA teams, even if they do make NA groups, will we'll win a best of five. So, that, I think, is just to kind of clarify my stance because I feel like a lot of people have, like, misinterpreted what my message was. They're like, oh, you just love shitting on NA. It's like, no, I'm more disappointed because I, I myself am North American. Like, I have a fucking stake in, 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 like, I have a horse in the race. You know, I competed in this region for years, and, you know, I, I want to see the region succeed. I just don't see, like, the progress being made to get to, like, the goal, which is obviously winning a world championship as NA. So um, that's why I say it. Thor, you got any uh, crazy world predictions before we wrap it up? You're just a toxic streamer, dude. Come on. Yeah, true. 
Sure, that's me. I've got a crazy one. Let me think, actually. I might have a good... I'll tell you what, I actually think... This won't sound as crazy, I guess, if the, in the context of the whole year, but being as everyone has a mad recency bias in LEC, like they just treat like the last week of the fucking split and then the playoffs like that was the whole year. I actually think everyone's super out on Mad Lions now because all Mad Lions did is beat Schalke in one series. That's it. They bombed the playoffs aside from that and they were just okay at best against G2 and G2 kind of styled on them. So my actual opinion is... They're a team where if you look at the pieces they've got and actually the coaching staff, and it all seems pretty well put together, I think they're a team that could level up a ton in that boot camp. So I could see that being a team that like shocks people, makes it playoffs, maybe challenges some like top fucking LPL teams in a series. Probably won't win. It's pretty hard to do that. But I'll say that. I'll say they're my sort of like dark horse wild card. I just feel like with the pieces they've got, I could see them being able to play lots of different styles. Like I'm not as high on like Rogue, for example, because they were they were a bit one-dimensional and they couldn't kind of keep that going. So mm -hmm. I'll take Mad Lions as my crazy pick. Like I said, they were yeah. technically first place team for a while, but no one else is picking them. So uh, yeah. I mean, their biggest problem was just their, their lack of flexibility in the jungle role when the meta mm -hmm. kind of shifted. And I think if they can pick that up, then they can get back to being a, a very strong contender. So I, I, I can see I can see where it comes from. Bron. You're yeah. not you're not you're not that uh, you're not delusional. that uh, <laughs> yeah. Let, let's just keep it there. <laughs> You're not that delusional. All right. Well, that was uh, that was episode 32 of the Crackdown. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm happy that Cold was here. is able to share his story and like kind of what happened over the last year where he's kind of been out of the public eye. I think this is the first talk show you've done coming back. So appreciate you being here. Thank you for uh, sharing all this information. I hope yeah, that you... you for, uh, for hosting. Yeah, for, for sure. Great. And I, I hope you get that coaching job that you desire in the future. Definitely think that you know, junglers are just we'll the see. smartest players, right? So if you want a, a smart player to, uh, you know, transition into that role, Cold is your guy. Anyways, thank also, you guys for watching. Uh, uh, before, you, before you throw it off, if if sure. anyone, uh, if anyone uh, are looking for any, uh, uh, like some of the stuff that I've learned from the, from as a player, if you're looking to find any, any help with some of the things I've been going through, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, I'll always be willing to to talk about these things or help if if you're looking for for any if you have any any thoughts about it or or anything I can help with uh, I would love to do that uh, um, so that's that's just uh, my awesome my last and you words. can find him right under uh, his camera right here at cold lol on Twitter all right so thank you guys for watching I appreciate everyone for being here and I guess I'll be on in a couple more hours for. Uh, more CN Super Silver Soul with you. Peace, guys.